Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, The Bistro, where we will discuss today's hottest consumer trends, predict the future with consumer experts, and learn how elite businesses and entrepreneurs continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Hello and welcome to The Bistro. Thank you for joining us for the Better Business Bureau. I'm your host, Elena Spinola. Today, we're speaking with Doug Hildebrand from the National Weather Service to discuss the national program, The Weather Ready Nation. Doug, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Doug, what is your role at the National Weather Service and what is the mission of your organization? So I'm a meteorologist and I work in the Office of Communications. So I'm sort of a A unique position where, by education, I am a meteorologist working with other scientists, but I'm also more of a communicator, and I like to sort of translate the science into messaging and preparedness actions that people can take. Excellent. And so um, working in the Office of Communications in Silver Spring, Maryland, um, the National Weather Service is a government agency under the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we call it NOAA, uh, which is under the Department of Commerce, which is a little known fact. But our mission is really to save lives and property. It's as simple as that. And we take observations and model data from our supercomputers, and we work with our commercial weather industry to make sure that Uh, All Americans, all communities around the country are ready, responsive, and resilient to extreme weather. Okay. Well, we are especially grateful to have you here today because, of course, last year we witnessed a number of extreme weather events and the devastating effects they can have. What can people do to be proactive when preparing for severe weather? I know that's a loaded question. That's right. It's a loaded question, but just some general tips. So we have a program called Weather Ready Nation which is our strategic initiative to work with businesses, communities, and individuals across the country to, again, have them ready, responsive, and resilient. And we we kind of work within these three messages um, and three actions of knowing your risk. So all, you know, people around the country, they may have a different risk in their community, and it may be a risk that they're really not thinking of. So you have to really Uh, Be creative and think, you know, just because it hasn't happened in the near past doesn't mean uh, an extreme event, severe weather uh, can't happen to them and can't happen to them at a certain period of time. So look at recently with the wildfires out west and even more recently with the snowstorm that traveled down into the deep south, Mm -hmm. uh, which hasn't happened for quite a few years. Um, So you have to know your risk. That's number one. Okay. Number two is take action. Everything has to be action oriented. You can't just sort of do mental exercises. You have to have a family plan. You have to practice that family plan. If you're a business, you have to have sort of a, a you know continuity of operations with your employees. And you have to make sure that your employees are prepared so that they can be in a, in a good state to come to work. Sure, sure. Well, I can certainly imagine that preparedness is crucial right. to just being able to get back on your feet after an event. And happens. our and our third action, and this may even be the most important, and that is to be an example to others. Be that force multiplier, that echo chamber where your actions can be emulated by others in your family, your neighbors, and your even your social media network. Okay. So these are really great tips in helping people kind of think about ways that they can be prepared as things happen. And I know the Weather Ready Nation is sort of an innovative collaboration with the media and emergency management community, etc. Why is it so important to build this nation of sort of collaborative efforts around the weather? The premise is actually very simple. It takes everyone from businesses to communities to individuals making an effort working together, communicating, having a plan, and really acknowledging that, you know, the old days of, you know, there's not much I can do, I'm not going to be getting advanced warning of these things, you know, sort of a fatalistic approach of if it happens, it happens. It's all about empowerment. Weather Ready Nation, Weather Ready is about empowerment, about making better decisions. And within uh, you know, my agency at the National Weather Service, we're all about feeding information to people to make better decisions, whether it's uh, mom and pop at home to government uh, leaders in the community 
to you know Fortune 500 companies down to the smallest one-person business. Sure. So how exactly would one become a Weather Ready Nation ambassador? Is there an Ooh. application process? Is this for individuals? Is this for uh, organizations and businesses? Yes. Talk to us about that. So, so the, the premise of Weather Ready Nation is that government can't do this alone. Okay, we can't just create forecasts and warnings and then have nobody act on them. So we've created this Weather Ready Nation Ambassador Initiative as really a commitment to partner with organizations, and that's very important. We have other opportunities to engage with individuals and citizen science, so we're really focusing on organizations, but it can be any organization. Again, we have several Fortune 500 companies, we have uh, churches and schools and fire and police departments, you know, organizations that are transglobal down to, you know, a, a small business in a community, but it's, it's an important business in that community. And what we're doing is asking for four things. One, uh, we provide preparedness information that you can share with your employees and share with your stakeholders. Two, Weather Ready Nation Ambassadors, it's really a commitment to partner with NOAA and the National Weather Service. So we can be innovative in ways that we can have, you know, pull together community events to uh, sort of branding campaigns to really get people to be thinking about preparedness. Three, share your success stories. When you're an ambassador, we're able to leverage our social media networks and other ways that we can really highlight your actions as something for others to to uh, serve as an example. And then fourth is, again, uh, really work with your employees and the people within your organization. If they are prepared, if they are resilient, your organization will be resilient. Sure. So you talked about some success stories, and I'd love to hear how your initiative has been received so far as you've been putting this out there. And can you share some of these success stories? Sure. So a couple of them come to mind. We have almost 7,000 organizations as ambassadors, hundreds of media, uh, almost 1,000 emergency management offices across the country. We have you know, notable names like Costco and Home Depot and Starbucks as an ambassador. And so we're really getting to uh, these organizations with a wide reach. Uh, but I really wanna stay local with this conversation. One, one of the great examples uh, is a church that last year provided winter weather seasonal safety in their church bulletin. And what I particularly like about this example is, you know, some people are skittish about government and what government tells them to do. Um, and it's not, you know, as much as we feel like our, our agency is, you know, a reputable, basically good business sure, or good, good government, excuse me, good government, right? Sure, sure. Um, working with businesses that, you know, here we are with a church, with congregation being able to take a look at this preparedness message, but getting it from a absolute trusted source, you know, their pastor, their reverend, their spiritual leader, and that is connecting them to, okay, I need to be paid, paying more attention to this because of that trusted source. Got it. So there's sort of validity when you can share it and other people then take your message and reshare it. That's right. right? It's really adding value to people who might not otherwise hear it directly from you guys or even trust it coming from whomever. They just might not trust whatever source. But if you take it to a local level where people are involved in their day to day life, if they're shopping at this particular Starbucks or they go to this Costco and they get to know the managers and this is the place of their business and then they're hearing this message, it's making an impact. That's basically the premise. And not only not only a trusted source, but multiple sources. When you hear something and it's just an isolated, you know, source, whether it's on social media you know, wherever, you tend to sort of look for confirmation elsewhere. So sure. if we can get people receiving messages from their insurance agent who's, you know, worried about flooding coming up to your spiritual leader, to, you know, the, the, the TV meteorologist on your favorite local station, if you're hearing the same message so it's consistent and you're hearing it from multiple sources, that's a winner that's in a winner. making a 
you know, making communities resilient. Sure, sure. So talk to us about your website a little bit. So someone can, someone listening, some sure. organization might go, you know what? This is I'd, perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. I want to <laughs> I want to partner with them. They're going to go to your website. They're going to take a look around. So there's resources for not only these organizations to partner with you, but also for everyday people to get more information, preparedness, et cetera. That's talk right. About that. That's right. So it's very user friendly and it really is more aspirational. Like we really want, again, it's a commitment to partner. So go to www.weather.gov, and once you're at our homepage, you'll see this big logo, WRN, with Weather Ready Nation spelled out. And if you click on that, that's really your first step to deeper engagement with the National Weather Service and NOAA. And so when you get into the sort of the ambassador portal, it shows you all the things you know, a lot of legalese that kind of protects government, but also protects our other ambassadors from those who may not want to act in, in good faith. And unfortunately, you know, everyone has to be protected with that. But then once you get through all the legalese, it really is about a five minute process of your contact information. It comes straight to us. We, if you're a local organization, local business, we connect you with one of our 122 weather forecast offices around the country. So, you know, the National Weather Service is rare in the sense of it has that local connection throughout the throughout the nation. Yeah, so it sounds like a very comprehensive place to go, your website, for anybody. And as we know, and we, you've, you and I have talked about this before, but severe weather events can happen any month of the year. And it's a That's really right. a 365-day preparedness mindset that it we is should a mindset. all have, especially considering what we all have all witnessed, not only last year, but I mean, almost, I mean, every year, right? There's events that really devastate communities. And that's kind of your goal is to that's right well i mean look at look at the area of houston who you know obviously is you know in the first phase of recovery from hurricane harvey but now just recently you know they're seeing you know three or four inches in the the deep south there so you have to be thinking multi-hazards you have to be thinking and preparing for the worst hoping for the best always but then really taking you know and our and our websites you know with weather rating nation we kind of do all the heavy lifting. We create infographics. We create narratives for people to take and use for their purposes. And what's great about the Ambassador Initiative is it doesn't force organizations to do things that sort of we think are important. It, it enables them to take the skill sets that their unique organization has and work with us to sort of, you know, blossom that that skill set. Yeah, well, that's a win-win for everybody. That's right. That's a win-win. And and it makes sense that they would want to partner with you in that way. Because again, if they're a business, they might be affected by whatever weather event, and they want to be on top of that and partner with an organization like yours to really figure out the best ways to stay safe, keep their employees safe, keep their businesses, uh, you know, functioning and getting back up and running as soon as possible when an event occurs like that. And yeah. And that's a really important point yeah. is to be ready, you know, ready, responsive, resilient. If you're a resilient organization, a resilient community, if the worst happens and you have an extreme event, whether it's a tornado outbreak or, you know, a hurricane, you're able to recover more quickly. You're able to get businesses back online, get that commerce going and really mitigate against, you know, a, a, a complete disaster. Absolutely, absolutely. So one more time, please share with us your website so people can go to this website, consider their organizations becoming a Weather Ready Nation ambassador, and for just anybody to get more information about uh, our weather and how they can prepare them, their own family. Please go to weather.gov. All right. Well, Doug, I want to thank you so much for coming in. This thank has been you. really, really helpful. Um, you know, the Better Business Bureau is deeply committed to building and advancing a better marketplace, a trusted marketplace for all because trust always matters. For the Better Business Bureau, I'm Elena Spinola, host of the Bistro Podcast. Until next time, it has been my pleasure discussing better business with you. You just enjoyed the Bistro Podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. 
This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.